Ah, oh, what's going on guys? It's Brennan here and in a matter of a few minutes, I want to share with you what you need to know about real estate. Now, if you're watching this video when it came out, you're probably going to say, Brendan, we're in the coronavirus. Why are you talking about real estate when real estate could take a very big hit in the near future? Well, that's why it's more important to talk about this than ever, because if the real estate market does get hit, it's going to be a great time to come in with cheap prices and pick something up that can be a really good investment for you for the future. And I actually bought a fourplex property last week, uh, even with the coronavirus going on and knowing that the real estate market can get hit. The reason why I did that is because my investment strategy has a very low amount of risk to it because it focuses on cash flow. My property is going to make a positive cash flow regardless of the fluctuation in the valuation of the property. And if you do have good cash flow, then you're not really risking that much. Some people might say, well, Brendan, what if your rents go down? Rents don't really go down, guys. And I'll explain that later in this video, why that's the case, why they generally do not go down. They generally just go up. And I will also explain to you one of the biggest myths in real estate, which is that real estate always goes up in value over time. Actually, in the US market in the last 40 years, the average value of a real estate property has not gone up at all when adjusted for inflation in the last 40 years. Now, I'll explain that a little bit later on as well because some of you guys are gonna look at me and say, Brendan, that's not true. I encourage you to wait until I finish my, my video and then we can have a discussion about it. Maybe you still think I'm full of crap anyways. Okay, so the first thing I wanna talk about is why will rents generally not go down and why are rents generally almost always going to be going up, okay? Here's why, guys. I got my whiteboard here. And I have something else I wanna talk about. So I have it on here, but let me see if I can find some space uh, to talk about this. I don't even need my whiteboard for this part. I don't even know why I brought it out. I'm gonna leave this for later, but that's gonna be something I wanna talk about here. So. The reason why rents don't go down is, I want you to think about this, and this is actually proven historically in every single major recession uh, and crash, usually the rents stay relatively constant even though the recession happens. The reason for it is because as property values are going down, less people wanna be property owners. That makes sense, right? If you see that the value of these assets are going down, why would you want to grab a falling knife, as they say? So why would you want to invest into something when it's on the way down? So for that reason, more people choose to rent than they choose to buy. Now, if more people are choosing to rent, what do you guys think happens to the rent, right? So the rent is based on supply and demand, just like the real estate prices are based on supply and demand. So the demand for buying a property goes way down and the prices of the properties goes way down. But the demand for renting actually goes up because people don't want to buy, they want to rent, okay? That's why your rents are always protected. So if you have a cash flowing property, even if you go through an economic recession, you're still relatively safe. So that's why when all these, you know, real estate gurus, they talk about cash flow and a bunch of units and all this kind of stuff, usually you're relatively uh, safe with that because your rents are not gonna take a big hit, even if the values do, and as long as you don't sell, then you don't really lose money. Now, the main reason why you would be interested in something like a recession or an economic crash is because you can now pick up real estate for a really good price. So as everyone's selling off and trying to get rid of their properties and have no interest in these properties, you can come in, scoop them up for really big discounts, and you can make a fortune when they go back up in value and you resell them, or you can just rent them out uh, and get really good discounts on your assets. Now, I don't know if the real estate market is gonna crash because of coronavirus or not, I know that um, it's gonna depend a lot on what the government does. And in the future video, if you're watching this like a year or two years from me posting this, you'll have known what actually happened. But um, I think that if the government bails everybody out, like people aren't able to make money at their job, but the government just gives them free paychecks anyways, then it's highly possible that the real estate market does not get hit. 
but I'm not somebody that can predict whether the real estate market will go up or down. Um, and very few people actually have the expertise to precisely know what's going to happen with any of the markets. So that's not something I want to talk about anyways. But I do want to talk about the myth of real estate, which is what my whiteboard's here for. Let me see if I can get this. There we go. That's better. Okay. So there, we're going to use the U.S. market as an example. I'm from Canada and Canada is not a good example because Canada has gone up in value over time and actually we're one of the most overvalued real estate uh, countries in the world. Same with Australia and other countries. So the first lesson is it depends on the market. When I say that real estate hasn't gone up in value in over 40 years, I'm talking about the U.S. market. And some of you guys are going to say, Brendan, you're full of crap. So we'll take a look at these two graphs that I created for you guys. The first one is called a nominal graph. The second one is adjusted for inflation. Now, if we look at the nominal graph, you look at something in the beginning that, you know, 40 years ago cost a fraction of the price that it does today. And you're going to think, okay, well, look at how much uh, this has gone up in value. And of course, the major dip you're going to see in, in the peak here in 2006. And then the crash, you know, 2000, we get to uh, 2009, 2000, 2009, I think it was ending. 2008 was the really big hit. And then 2009, it was still going down. And you have the bottom here at like 2009. Maybe it's more significant than that. But if you look at over time, your ending point is a lot higher than your starting point. And this is where people will say real estate always goes up in value over time. Well, there's a difference. It goes up in price, but it doesn't necessarily go up in value. Now on the, what is this? The right side of your screen? <laughs> I, I got to look at my video up here to see. Uh, on the right side of your screen, you see adjusted for inflation. Now, if you look at adjusted for inflation, you actually end up with a much smaller difference. So you're still going to see a difference in price from 40 years ago to today, but it's not going to be that significant because when you adjust it for inflation, it's relatively close to the same amount of value. Now, you guys probably know what inflation is. I'm almost sure that 90% of you guys do know, uh, just so we're on the same page. Inflation means that the value of money goes down. So every year on average, 3.2% in the States over that period, your, the value of your money has gone down by about 3.2% every single year. So 3.2% might not sound like a lot, but 3.2% in 10 years is 32%, right? So the value of your money over a period of 30 years is your money has basically halved in value. Actually, because we're talking about compounding effects, it's even more than that. But the bottom line is, is that over time, your value of your money is going down. Now, of course, this is one of the major pluses and benefits of investing in real estate because real estate keeps up with inflation. Okay. Now, before I get into talking about that, you're probably thinking, well, Brendan, you just told me that the price of real estate or the value of real estate didn't go up in 40 years. And then you show me how even when it's nominal or it's adjusted for inflation, it's still gone up no matter what. So you're full of, you know what? Well, I'm going to do one more graph here to show you guys the reason why the average value of property in the States has gone up in the last 40 years, but not by that much. It's because homes today are better than they were 40 years ago. So if you actually take a look at the data of the, the square footage of houses today compared to 40 years ago, as well as the finishings and the materials used in general, the quality of the home has gone up in proportion to the increase in value of the home. Now we're not talking about the quality of the home in proportion to the price, because we all know that the price of homes over time is going to be going crazy up. 
So this is the nominal graph where you end up with super high prices at the end. So of course, if we're talking about price of homes, we're always gonna be going significantly up. If we're talking about value, and value is adjusted for inflation, then you're gonna know that it's gone up a little bit. The reason why it's gone up a little bit is because the quality of the home has gone up a little bit. So when people say the value of real estate always goes up or the, you know, when they say kind of blindly, real estate always goes up over time. It's a safe investment. It always goes up over time. It's actually incorrect. Real estate keeps up with inflation. And when you see a really bubble, like a real estate bubble, really the value of property is not up. The value of property is inflated which means it's gone above the real market value of that property. Now, when there is a bubble or an inflation like there was back in 2006, 2007, that's where there's gonna be a correction or a recession and then real estate's gonna go all the way down until it reaches that line where there's the real market value and that's where it's gonna stop and then it's gonna go back up again. So real estate does not go up over time. Real estate inflates and then goes back to market value and then inflates and then goes back to market value, et cetera. The reason for that is because of debt. Because people can get money for almost nothing today, uh, I can go to the bank right now in Canada and get loans for 2.59% was my last mortgage rate that I got for my fourplex that I just bought. That's almost free money. I mean, the 2.59% uh, interest doesn't even um, pay or doesn't even charge me for the rate of inflation that I'm saving uh, for getting into that property, let alone anything else. So money is almost free today. And when you have free debt and people get more purchasing power, when people have more purchasing power, they're willing to pay more for their purchases. So as you can imagine, the cheaper that you make debt, the bigger you make the bubble, okay? And as you guys know, our real estate interest rates have been going down relatively over time. They've gotten really low at points. And when those interest rates get really, really low, uh, they generally create real estate bubbles, okay? Now, if real estate doesn't really go up in value over time, it only really inflates and deflates and stays around the fair market value, can you still make money with appreciation in real estate? The answer to that is yes, because you're, you're making money in the sense that you're not losing money like you would be if you just stored cash, your money's going down in value. Real estate is actually keeping up with inflation, so you're gaining on that front, but you're gaining on a really major, bigger, uh, bigger front that's even more important. Let me get the whiteboard out here. <laughs> The bigger front, this is the one that is huge. And this is going to be the one word in this video that could change your life. Now, I know we're in the coronavirus times, so you always have, this is, the, this is the one time where you really have to be careful with what I'm about to share with you. But after we end these times, when the discounts are there, this could be the one word that makes you a millionaire. So it's very important. It's called leverage. Is that all on here? Leverage. Okay. Now, when you buy a property, the best thing to do, usually if it's for investment's sake, is to put a fraction of the money into it. Now, when you do that, let's say I buy a $500,000 home. In Canada, that's a normal price. I know Canadians, our property is overvalued, unfortunately. So if I go buy and I put down 20%, 20% of 500,000 is $100,000, okay? So that's how much money I'm actually putting into this. Let me check the time here. Okay, I got a few minutes. Uh, $100,000 is the money that you're putting into the property. That means you are loaning $400,000. You're getting somebody else to give you the rest of the money. Now, if we have, let's say, a 3% interest rate, 
well, let's not even say it. What we will say was with this property, let's say it's my fourplex or it's a duplex or whatever it is. Let's just say for, for pretend here, but really you should only be getting a real estate if it does this, that your tenants, because this is a rental property, give you more money. Uh, you actually make a profit in cash flow, which means that your mortgage is completely paid for. Does that make sense? So for my fourplex, for example, right now, my mortgage payment is $2,400. Now my market rent for that fourplex is $5,300 per month. It got appraised at that rental value. So you can see here that my mortgage payment of $2,400 is gonna easily get paid by my rent. So this is a cash flowing property. So when you have a cash flowing property, then you are not really paying for the mortgage. Your tenants are paying for the mortgage, right? So if we pretend that my mortgage payment is just getting paid for by these tenants, and you see that I put $100,000 in and it's uh, $400,000 lended, let's say that over time, this property just keeps up with inflation. And let's say the inflation is 3.2%, okay? So it's just going to keep up with inflation, just 3.2%. That's incredibly conservative because over time in Canada, properties have gone up by more than the rate of inflation, but we'll say that it just keeps up with the rate of inflation, especially in the states where that's generally been the case over the last 40 years. So what will happen in this case is that I'm not just gonna get the 3.2% on the money that I paid, I'm gonna get the 3.2% appreciation or increase in price on the whole $500,000, which means that 3.2% of $500,000 is about 16%. Not 16%, uh, it's not 3.2% is 16%, no, it's $16,000. Do you guys see that why? Because it's gonna keep the $500,000 house is gonna keep up with the rate of inflation, which is around 3.2% over time, uh, which means it's gonna appreciate by about $16,000 per year. Now remember, your money is the $100,000. This is how much money that you put in. So even though your property is appreciating in value by $16,000 per year, you're only putting in 100,000, which means that you're getting 16%, um, you know, a 16% equity boost per year on your money that you put in, which is $100,000. So you put in $100,000, but you gain 16,000 every year in equity appreciation of your property. Now that's just the equity appreciation. Remember that in this case, and this is a real life example, uh, actually I just got this property, even in an economic crisis, um, I'm actually gonna make a, a couple thousand dollars, 1,500 to $2,000 per month in cash flow. Now let's say it's $1,500 conservatively, uh, that's gonna turn into $18,000 in cash flow. So now I'm getting $16,000, uh, 16, so now I'm getting $16,000 in equity appreciation in my home per year on average. I'm getting $18,000 in cash flow, and my mortgage is getting paid down at the exact same time for my tenants. Overall, my total return is way over 20% per year on my money. Now that's why real estate is good. Real estate is not good because of the idea that real estate always goes up over time. No, the value of real estate kind of just keeps up with inflation. The reason why real estate is incredibly profitable is because of leverage. You only have to put down 20% of your own money and you can use the banks or other people's money to give you a much bigger return. Because uh, if I get my tenants to pay for my mortgage, I don't have any expenses anymore. My tenants are paying for my expenses. So when it appreciates by 3.2% and 80% is other people's money, I get the appreciation on other people's money. I get the 3.2% appreciation on my money, which is the 100,000, but I also get the 3.2% appreciation on other people's money. So all of the value that appreciates on this other people's money, I keep for myself, even though it's not 
my money. Now, keep this in mind, guys. When I say it's gonna go up 3.2% per year, we know that that is not a constant. So it's not like every year it's gonna go up by 3.2% because as the time I'm creating this video, it's the coronavirus times, it is possible that we could go through a market correction, in which case uh, it could go down significantly in the near future. So if you were buying real estate today, hoping that you would make the 3.2% or $16,000 on appreciation per year for the next two, three years, four years, you could be sorely mistaken because over the short term, it could go up a lot, it could go down a lot, it's gonna fluctuate over time, it's always gonna keep up with inflation, but during that, it's gonna go up and down and up and down. So I'm not necessarily saying it's a great value or a great deal to buy real estate today, but I will tell you that at least my strategy is I am buying and holding, so I'm actually never going to sell these properties. So if I have a property that cash flows really well, I'll buy it in any time. It doesn't matter whether it's the good times, the bad times, if it cash flows really well, I want it because I know that over time it's going to go up, even if it goes down in the near future. And I know that I'm going to make a profit on my cash flow. Now, some people might say, and this is the last thing I want to talk about in this video. What happens with who cares if you get this 16,000 appreciation over time? Who cares? Because if you never actually sell the home, you never actually make that money. Well, you can do what's known as a refinance. A lot of you guys are going to know this already. Uh, not, but um, in five years time, I mean, the United States and Canada is different with their mortgages, but for in Canada, you have a five year term, which means after the five years ends, you renegotiate and get new financing. But in the States, you can get refinancing as well. So if over time, let's say 10 years later, this property has gone up 16,000 per year for 10 years. So it's gone up 160,000. So now it's worth $660,000. I can refinance with the bank and they will give me, um, basically if I, let's say, we'll use that as an example here. So let's say it was 500,000 and now it's gone up to 660,000. Well, when I get my new financing, I can get financing based on what it is worth today, which means that the bank is gonna give me 80% of this number. So 80% of what it's worth when I actually renegotiate my, my financing, 80% of this is uh, 10, what's 10%? 10% 10 is 66,000. Well, what is 80% of this? <laughs> what's 10% is, is 66, right? 20% is 120, 132,000. So, yeah, so 132,000, so that's 628, 628, 628, 528. Basically, you get $132,000. I think that's right. So the difference here is $160,000. Uh, from what it was worth to what it's worth now. So in 10 years, it's gone up $160,000. That $160,000, 80% of that you get to keep back as principal. You can actually pull that cash out of the property. And, uh, and, uh, and then the bank is gonna lend you um, based on these terms. So basically you just get to pull $132,000 out of the property. Now, remember that when we got this property, we invested 100,000. So when we actually refinance here, we're taking more than that $100,000 out of the property during that refinance. Um, so that means all this appreciation that you're building, the $16,000 per year, that is all equity that's gonna be stored in your property that you can actually take out later. All right, was that fun? I know a lot of you guys probably knew all that information already. There might be some new things in there that you learned about for the first time. Uh, but in a nutshell, let me check my time here. Uh, that's the reason why I'm super bullish on real estate. There's so many different ways that you get your return. It's relatively reliable because we know over time uh, that real estate values are going to stay around the same relative to inflation. Because you have the opportunity of leverage here, 
you can actually get a really good return for your money because you're using mostly other people's money. And as long as your property can get paid for by your tenants, then you can basically leverage other people's money to make your fortune. Now, that's it, guys. <laughs> um, that's it. That's all. That's um, my opinion when it comes to real estate. I'd love to hear your feedback on it. I'm sure a lot of you guys know uh, your own thing or two and wisdom when it comes to real estate as well. So go ahead and hit up my comments what you think about this video and what your take on it is. So thanks for watching, guys. Have an amazing day. And I'll be back again soon with another free video where we can talk about some new stuff and things I've learned along the way uh, that, you know, may, <laughs> you know, it's just food for thought. Maybe it's something you haven't thought about before and that you can apply in your own life. So thanks for watching, guys. Talk to you soon. Bye for now.